The Democratic Alliance has now launched a national online petition to object to the gazetted name changes of Port Elizabeth to Gobeja and Duteneg to uh, Kariha. Now, the opposition party says there's a lack of transparency on how the ANC government and the Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Natim Teta, arrived at approving these names. For more insight on the position taken by the DA, let's bring in the party's provincial chair in the Eastern Cape, Andrew Whitfield, who joins us now via our telephone line. Andrew, thanks for your time. Welcome to the program. Help us ascertain exactly what the contention is for the DA here. Is it a, a matter of disputing the supposed lack of transparency in getting to these name changes, or the name changes themselves. So thanks very much, Ayanda. It's a combination of the two. I, I think on the one end, it's a lack of transparency around the process and the level to which the city has been consulted, uh, because it is the city at the end of the day that will bear the brunt of the consequences uh, of any name change, whether those be financial or from a tourism point of view, where people aren't able to identify with a particular destination to which they've been traveling for many, many years. So I think it's a much more complex process than, than simply just changing a name with a stroke of a pen. And then on the other end, um, the mayor, Yaba Banker, who's the, the DA mayor of our coalition government, Nelson Mandela Bay, contends that the, name, the names that have been chosen are actually arbitrary in the sense that they don't necessarily um, portray the uh, values of reconciliation, that they aren't necessarily inclusive, uh, and that um, they appear to be a move by one uh, faction of the ANC to achieve recognition for one particular ethnic group rather than an inclusive process that achieves an inclusive uh, name at the end of the day. So we're not opposed to name changes in principle, but that process must be inclusive and it must be uh, transparent, and we don't believe it was. You don't think uh, a mention that this was a name change by a stroke of a pen is a bit of an exaggeration? My understanding is that there was a public consultation that took place, and perhaps how we got to these particular names is what's being contested. Yeah, it's interesting that all three names for the airport, uh, the, the change of name for Utenake and the change of name from Port Elizabeth, are all uh, names related to the, the Khoisan people led by one activist who's Christian Martin. Um, and that gives you some indication to the lack of inclusivity inclusive of the public participation process. Were all communities truly represented? Was it a really substantive public participation process? And, and we know that public participation is not always um, uh, uh, as inclusive as it should be. But with something like this, what's happened is it's divided uh, a city. There are many, many people who are upset from, from all walks of life. Uh, we've engaged with people from uh, all communities in Nelson Mandela Bay, and there seems to be general outrage as to the manner in which these names were decided upon. And, and that is what we're trying to achieve, is we're trying to seek clarity as to actually how many people participated in the public protest, uh, participation, what other names were considered, and in terms of intergovernmental relations and the consequences for the city, you know, to what extent was the city really brought on board in a really meaningful way? Mm. So in a recent statement, the DA says it's worried about the money that will go into changing these names, but in the same breath says it's actually not averse to changing of names. Which one is it? So the financial concern is placed um, very, very appropriately in the middle of uh, an unprecedented economic crisis off the back uh, of uh, the unprecedented pandemic that we faced in South Africa, where our economy has been decimated. Ratepayers and residents are incurring the costs of local governments which simply don't have the funds to fund basic services. Uh, and so I don't think it's justified to be spending hundreds of millions of rands potentially just in one city, Nelson Mandela Bay, which has an unemployment rate of 45 or 44 percent, uh, to be directing funds which could be spent on delivering better services to people on uh, what we believe to be uh, the name change process, which we, we don't believe to have been inclusive and fair. If it was inclusive and fair, uh, you know, as we, we don't oppose name changes in principle, but the cost at this point in time, where we are in our economy and what's required to bring people together to get them into jobs and to deliver better services, unfortunately, Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality doesn't have the kind of resources to channel into both delivering services as well as uh, changing names on everything from letterheads to signage uh, that will incur significant costs for the, for the institution. I hear you, Andrew, but uh, are you not seeing the double speak here? Uh, uh, you know, it's either names shouldn't be changed because they cost too much, or the name changes can go ahead but should be different. The DA almost yeah. seems to be trying to tap into both, and there's a disjuncture there. You have to see that. I don't have to see it. I mean, I can see how you might see it, but yeah. I've just explained 
the financial concern is placed directly in the middle of an economic crisis. So if, if we weren't dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, the idea of this costing too much wouldn't matter to you? Well, the statement would be focusing much more on the procedural elements, which we believe were flawed. We've never opposed the name change uh, uh, principle. The principle is fine. The process in which it's been carried out appears to have been factional. It appears to have uh, even blindsided some uh, elements of the ANC who are also opposed to it. So it's not the DA standing on our own saying we oppose the name change uh, for no reason whatsoever. The ANC and other political parties in Nelson Mandela Bay are equally outraged. Mm. Uh, and in fact, the ANC has come out very strongly against the manner in which the process unfolded. And so clearly there are, um, from a, an opposition point of view, it's quite inclusive. Uh, it's not just the DA standing on our own, but I don't think the financial concerns are this place. And I don't think that there's a, a disjuncture if we consider where we are at this point in time. Mm. What is interesting, though, is that this is brought into the foreground uh, a debate around language, right? Uh, part of what the mayor of Nelson Mandela Bay is arguing is that Kabecha is actually a Khoi name written in Isikosa, and that's where the meaning making gets lost. Interestingly enough, though, language has always evolved. We've borrowed names for as long as we've spoken, some might argue. And yeah. in that spirit, should it then not make sense to let this one go, at least on that score? Yeah, the name Kabecha, you know, unfortunately doesn't have the same resonance um, that. Uh, it, it could have to make it a much more inclusive name for Nelson Mandela Bay. And I think that was where the mayor's departure point was. And yes, he's gotten into the details of language and the differences between languages and the evolution of language. Uh, I'm not an anthropologist, but I certainly think and would hope that the Department of Arts and Culture would have considered all of these things. And we're trying to get the records of the decision and, and how they determined that these names uh, of David Sperman, Karecha, and uh, Ittebecha uh, have all got quite uh, origins. Uh, and there's no Tosa or, or any other cultural or linguistic uh, reflection in the name changes uh, of a city that's incredibly diverse and represents the name of Nelson Mandela uh, in its municipality. It's a city of reconciliation and the first city since 1994 to form a transitional local council uh, prior to 1994. So, so I think the history of the polit politics of the city and the language uh, is an interesting debate that we must have. But we need to have all the facts on the table. And at the moment, uh, the Minister of Arts and Culture is uh, not playing open cards, which is why the mayor has written to him to request um, all of the relevant information so that we can better understand how they determined that this was the right name uh, for Port Elizabeth. Mm. So the DA has got an online petition, as you rightly mentioned. The mayor has written to the minister. What happens next? So we're hoping to garner enough uh, uh, signatures in order to get the minister to reconsider and uh, ultimately to reconvene the process so that we can um, make sure that as a city we encourage residents to participate to make it a much more inclusive process. Provided the process is, is inclusive and that we have, uh, you know, people from across all walks of life participating in the process, whatever the outcome is, we, we must live with the outcome. Uh, we, however, remain un unconvinced that the process was inclusive, and, and that is the purpose of the list letter and the petition, is to ultimately to get the information we need to determine what level of participation was actually involved, and then uh, ultimately uh, to get the minister to consider reconvening the process to make sure that we truly reconcile the people of Nelson Mandela Bay rather than divide them, which, which unfortunately this name change process appears to have achieved. Andrew Whitfield is the chair of the Democratic Alliance in the Eastern Cape. Andrew, thanks very much indeed for your